People who exercise live longer, but what if you don't care about living longer? Who, who cares about that? I don't care. People who exercise sleep better, but what if you don't care about sleeping better? S sleep's for losers. Okay, but if you don't even care about all that, well, people who exercise also have better memory, better cognition, lower levels of anxiety, lower levels of depression, and greater qualities of life. Yeah, I don't even understand what you just said, but I bet I can get this really close to my eyes and hair without lighting it on fire. <laughs> If you don't care about having a improved quality of life or living longer, there are bigger issues going on here. Huh? But personally, beyond those things, exercise has just made me feel better. It keeps me on schedule. It's made me countless friends. It gets me in nature and it's just fun. So in this video, we're gonna talk about all about exercise. What is exercise? Why should we exercise and how to get started? So what is physical exercise? Well, all exercise is, is a physical activity that will increase your breathing and heart rate. Your breathing and heart rate increase because at some point, the cells in your body will require more oxygen. And the increase in the breathing rate will help get that oxygen into your blood. And the increase in the heart rate will help getting that oxygenated blood to your peripheral tissues. Also, when we're exercising, our body starts to generate CO2, which is kind of like a waste byproduct. And for example, when people are very sick, say they took an opioid overdose or something like that, their breathing rate is very slow. And because of that, they can't get all the CO2 out of their blood. And because they get start to build up CO2 in their blood, their blood actually starts to become acidic. It starts to become poisonous to themselves. So this increase in breathing and heart rate are really important when we're exercising. But really why exercise? This bonus abilities, our hearts and lungs abilities to kind of get better when we exercise is cool, but why do we care? Of the 56 million people that died across the world in 2017, half of them died from two things. And those two things were cardiovascular disease and cancer. What if? exercise could lower these numbers? What if exercise has an effect on the two biggest killers in the world? The number two killer in the world killing 10.08 million people was various cancers. And in the US, that number was 599,601. In one study which from 2019, which combined nine prospective cohort studies, that means looking towards the future, and followed these 755,459 people for 10 years, exercise and cancer incidents were measured. And they compared people's activity with something called met hours, which is just metabolic equivalent tasks hours. So one met hour is your baseline. So say you're laying in your bed for one hour, that's a metabolic equivalent of one. Walking for one hour is 3.5 met hours. Running a 8.5 minute mile pace for one hour is 11 met hours. And these were the values that were used for the study. So this study only included leisure time physical activity. So if during the entire week, you only walk for one hour, your total met hours of that week is 3.5 met hours. So what they did then is they looked at how many met hours these people are doing every single week. And then they looked at that person and said, okay, do they get cancer? What type of cancer do they get? And they did this across 755,000 people. So here's what they found. Engagement in 7.5 to 15 met hours a week which is 2.5 hours a week of moderate intensity activities such as brisk walking or weightlifting, compared to no activity at all, showed 8 to 14% reduced risk of colon cancer, 6 to 10% reduced risk of breast cancer, 10 to 18% reduced risk of endometrial cancer, 11 to 17% reduced risk of kidney cancer, 14 to 19% reduced risk of myeloma, 18 to 27% reduced risk of liver cancer, and 11 to 18% reduced risk in non-Hodgkin lymphoma. So walking for just 30 minutes, five times a week, you'll hit these numbers. And here's the really cool part. There was a statistically significant dose response curve for the amount of exercise and the reduced incidence in cancer. That means to a degree, the more exercise, the greater reduced risk of cancer. And I'll link some things down below. There's a complete guide from the US Department of Health. Now let's talk about the leading cause of morbidity and mortality worldwide, and that is heart disease. And in 2020, heart disease killed 18.56 million people worldwide and 659,000 people in the US. And exercise lowers your risk of cardiovascular disease plain and simple. Specifically, these recommendations come from the American Heart Association and the American College of Cardiology. And one of the main reasons they make this recommendation is because of the association between exercise and lower 
lower blood pressure, and also the association between exercise and optimized lipid levels. And this is important because a lower blood pressure means we're less likely to have heart attack and stroke. So one study looked at over 400,000 people associated activity levels with cardiovascular disease and coronary heart disease. And the researchers saw such strong associations and such scientific evidence that they even were concluding that there was a cause between exercise and reduced risk. And remember, that's a really strong statement because correlation does not equal causation. We need empirical association, temporal priority of the independent variable, and non-spuriousness to claim a causal relationship. And those are not easy things to get. More simply, we need statistically significant evidence. It needs to make sense on the time scale, and it needs to be scientifically plausible that these things can happen. And they summed up their results by saying, many plausible biological mechanisms demonstrated in randomized clinical trials, discussed in all other articles in this review, strongly support a causal relationship. That's huge. Furthermore, we see an amazing dose-dependent response curve between exercise and cardiovascular disease. Remember, that means to a degree, the more you exercise, the lower your risk of cardiovascular disease. Compared to the least active people, the most active people have a 30 to 40% reduced risk of cardiovascular disease. And the American Heart Association says, initial benefits come from about 150 minutes per week of this moderate intensity exercise, which is literally just walking. And you can see increased benefits when you go 300 minutes and beyond. Finally, one bonus thing, not necessarily the biggest killer in the world, but the leading cause of disability worldwide is depression. It is the most common mental disorder and a significant contributor to the global burden of disease. It affects 280 million people worldwide, and at its worst, it can lead to suicide. Who or what can save this vast number of people? Well, doctors are your best bet. They should be your first line of defense, the first people you go to. But, you know, a couple steps after that, I think exercise can work magic. One review article updated in 2013 looked at 39 trials comparing exercise and no treatment, exercise compared to psychological therapies, exercise compared to alternative therapies such as light therapy, and exercise compared with pharmacological treatments. So they amazingly found a significant difference between doing exercise and doing nothing at all, based on these two scales. Even more interesting to me, when they compared exercise to psychological therapy or even pharmacological therapy, exercise was shown to be non-inferior. However, I want to say that the, those latter results that I just said were based only on a few small trials. Speak to your doctor before trying anything I discuss, and speak to your doctor before changing any therapies or anything like that. Also, why stop these things? Why not just add exercise on top of what you're already doing. So exercise is amazing. It's magic. The only thing in my life that's had more of a positive impact on my life is good sleep and good relationships. That's it. Everything else falls under exercise for me. Exercise is this magic, magic thing. Nothing else beats it. Not fulfillment and work, not diet, not even nature time. Exercise makes every aspect of my life better. So how would I start exercising if I've never exercised at all? Well, the first thing I would do is I would talk to your doctor before doing any exercise. Remember, this video is no medical advice whatsoever. I'm just saying things that are interesting and things that have affected me positively. But then after I talked to my doctor, I would do some research and look at what the evidence says in regards to exercise. And there's an excellent PDF document from the Department of Health, which I'll link down below, but here's basically what it says. It recommends a minimum of 150 minutes of moderate intensity exercise or 75 minutes of vigorous exercise. And moderate intensity exercise is three to 5.9 mets, which includes walking briskly or raking the yard. And vigorous activity is six mets or more, which includes running or a fitness class. Then I would even up it a little bit more based based on this PDF and say, a goal of greater than 300 minutes of moderate intensity exercise or 150 minutes of vigorous exercise would be optimal. And then these recommendations also say, two or more days a week of muscle strengthening activity involving all muscle groups. And step number three, after you've talked to your doctor, after you've done the research, is I would find one thing that seems like fun and is exercise. For me, I love playing soccer and I play soccer probably two to three times a week. And that's one fun version of exercise I do every single week. So find one fun version of exercise that you could do every single week and start doing it every week because you want to start to associate in your brain exercise with some fun. Sure, sometimes it's hard work, but it can also be fun. Then after I have my one fun activity, I'd add two sessions in the gym doing weightlifting. And if it's your first time ever, I'd make sure to get a personal trainer or a very knowledgeable weightlifting friend to help you out. And then remember, because we're going for 300 minutes a week of exercise, so I'd subtract what you got from your one fun activity of a week. Maybe you do that twice a week. And then also your two weightlifting sessions a week 
week or hopefully more, maybe even three or four weightlifting sessions a week. And then I just fill in to get to those 300 minutes with walking. So say you've hit 200 minutes of exercise with your gym time and your fun activity during the week. Well, maybe you can spend, go for three 30 minute walks or three 33 minute walks during the week. And then you'll hit that 300 minutes of time. Overall, exercise can decrease our risk of dying from the two most common killers in the world, cancer and cardiovascular disease. And it can also alleviate the most common disability in the world, depression. And there's one final thing I wanna mention about exercise, and it's the amazing positive feedback loop that happens when you start exercising regularly. When you exercise and you enjoy it, you wanna do more, your body wants to do more. And because you're getting more fit from doing this exercise, you can do more exercise, and then your body starts to like doing more and more exercise. And it's this amazing positive feedback loop. You start to get, your body actually starts to get addicted to exercise which is one of the best things to be addicted to. You can exercise more and you want to exercise more. And also, as I just said, right, exercising consistently will lead to a healthier body and a healthier mind. And a healthier body and a healthier mind will help improve every aspect of your life. Remember, sleep, subjective quality of life, your ability to think, your levels of anxiety and depression, and probably tons, tons more things. Everything gets better. Exercise is magic. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you on the next one. I gotta get some push-ups in my exercise. I'm done. There we go. Do some, some jump jack.